Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, happy Tuesday to you. Let's learn some StarCraft, shall we? Oh, I always have to point to the insanely gorgeous graphic design by Red Ice 82 Before then telling you the topic of today, we're going to do something a little more fun, a little more chill, a little more relaxed. If you look back at the last several weeks of this show, it's been pretty hardcore. Just like content, content! Clips, micro matchup strategy, all this stuff. And we'll certainly continue that because we have one more matchup to go. Zerg vs. Zerg, which we're banging out on Thursday. But today, I just want to watch some games of StarCraft. I have myself a replay pack of Jadong's 2010 practice uh, Zerg vs. Protoss games. Not all of them, just a selection of them. And this is during a period of time when Jadong was still terrorizing the whole world. So this is Jadong in, in what many consider his prime form. And we're just going to have a blast and watch a whole bunch of his games. Of course, since they're all Zergvers Protoss games, we got to start with his games against Bisu. And fortunately, he played both of these games on Circuit Breaker, uh, a map that, if you have been watching this series at all or playing it all on the ladder, it's a pretty standard-looking map. Jadong is in the corner under the ID JD. One, two, three, three, two, three, one, one, two, one. And up here, we have Bisu Shield under the name Bisu Shield. And I gotta say, I, I think this map is really interesting for Zerg vs. Protoss. You know, I think, like, for instance, Terran vs. Protoss, I find this map less interesting uh, due to the... Uh, where do I go? It's in the Diplomacy. Reveal entire map. A lot of the reason is the way this formation impacts Terran vs. Protoss. Because, like, in Terran vs. Protoss, you can basically control this bridge, fight over this, and easily control this. And as Terran, you get one, two, three, four bases. Oh, which is very rare in Terran vs. Protoss. In Zerg vs. Protoss, on the other hand, I really like the fact that, you know, Zerg and Protoss get access to sort of differently textured bases. You don't really have the ability to do as much weird wall off and turtle up for ultra long periods of time um, on some maps and not others. Pretty much Zergs can do the big turtley style on a lot of maps, but I, I like the way that these expansion formations on the bottoms work. So Jadong doing something. This is, it's so funny to see this, because this, people just don't do nowadays. This is 2010, remember. In, in 2017, pretty much always players over pool. They build an overlord, wait till the pool's mostly done, or excuse me, wait till the overlord's mostly done, and then start a spawning pool. It allows... A reasonably quick hatchery, but more importantly, quite quick zerglings. Because, again, it is not as common anymore. It's still common, but back then, this was 95% of games was Forge First. So, a lot of zergs responded to the Forge First frequency by just hatch firsting. Yeah! Jadong's actually going to get cannon rushed, man. I'm real curious about how this one's going to play out. Looks like Bisu's elected to do this really annoying-ass cannon rush. I don't really find this to be that difficult to deal with. Unless he builds two cannons, which is just literally what happened. Against one cannon, you just let it shoot, and then you build two creep colonies, and then you're fine. Aren't you seeing another reason why people just love to go pool first in this matchup? So Bisu, er, so Jaylong lets it finish. Builds creep colony. And were I in his shoes, I might just build another one of those. But of course, Jadong is a better player than I can. Or, than I ever. <laughs> He's a better player than I can. Can this shoot that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so these can mutually shoot each other. Look at this calm defense. I love using this word when talking about StarCraft. Just defend it calmly. Just easily establish control over the defenses. Now, what's funny is that in um, this period of time, this is during 2010, this is really the moment where this started to become really popular. Third hatch at another main to wall it off. Up until that point, players tended to go for third hatch almost always at a closer base. And occasionally would do stuff like this, but in the modern Zerg vs. Protoss era, like now, starting, actually starting probably around 2009, 2010 to now. So there's realized you could just take this and then build a macro hatchery up here and build tons of extra hatcheries and kind of overwhelm. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool to see this as being a period of time when this was still in its more fledgling states. 
But I'm also curious the style that Bisu is going to use on this map. Because Bisu is just the most popular Protoss for Zerg player ever. Oh, and he slips the Zerglings in. Uh, at this period in time, I don't know if Bisu was doing heavy Corsair Zealot or he was still opening Corsair High Templar, Corsair DT, stuff like this. But this is something I really admire about Jadong's gameplay, like always. Any time he finds opportunities to do stuff with his early lings, he just takes it. Like, for me, I would have built eight lings and then just had eight lings here. Nope. Jadong marches right on in. Gets the scouts. Here's no cybernetic score. That's very happifying. Drones galore getting produced. Oh my gosh, foreign gas. How embarrassing. Funny, if you watch the micro videos that I talked about, I always talk about not over microing. Don't bring too many things off. I love that Bisu's kind of doing this that right here. He's not over micro. He's just bringing like three probes. These ones get harassed. He turns, and then he's just all right, transferring them all back to mining. This is a pretty calm looking game. Jadong's playing at a billion actions per minute. Contributing to his RSI. Alright. Building a Stargate, as to be expected. The real question that I have is what Jadong's going to do with this next gas. Or what Bisu's going to do with this next gas. Is he going to build a Citadel? He's just going to go straight for the plus one. This is also very Bisu to get a very fast assimilator. Well, looks like nothing. Everything going on in Camp Bisu's like typical, man. Just getting the Zergling speed. It's so funny how, like, when I think back to what a player I was in 2004 5 and stuff, it's like little basic rules you just didn't really know about. Like, you can go layer and then speed and you're safe. Sometimes it'd be like, ooh, I'd be trying to scout to figure out whether I needed to get Zergling speed. I'd sometimes rush for it. Turns out, no, you're just pretty much safe all the time. Yeah, this is looking, the style is looking very similar to. The modern Bisu style. No plus one on the cybernetic score, just on this. Bisu, more recently, pretty much always gets this plus one. Most Protosses always get plus one now. Jadong's powering up. I remember some of the first times I saw Jadong do this, where he just like built hatches everywhere. I was just like, you can you can do this? Because this looks like cheating, man. This looks like cheating to me. Cannon in the main, salt legs coming up. This is looking, this is looking just like old school Bisu. Newer school Bisu would be getting more gateways, gateway, gateway, all the way up to four. Look at this! Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. I feel like when I'm watching this right now, you know, I kind of get this feeling like if you ever like been really interested in some celebrity or musician or politician or whatever and you go back and you watch old videos of them and they look younger but a lot of the way they talk is still the exact same like this is what i'm looking at like baby dong man baby j dong a baby bisu be oh look at him he's doing he's, he's like doing an impersonation of his mod of his modern self man now here's what i'm interested in what is bisu gonna do with these Zealots with leg speed. Typical defense, making sure that you are turtled, so you can protect one sunken colony, but then spread a bit so you can cover a lot of space. Same thing here. Covers the space. Bisu was amazing about this. He would just always push in so hard. Oh, look at this. Carapace first. Getting Carapace in air is sensible, because... Pretty much always, you're going to be going up against uh, Corsairs in large numbers. So Carapace is great there. But the Carapace here generally indicates that you're not interested in building that many Hydralisks or being Hydralisk focused in the game. Oh, look at that nice control. Ooh. Ooh, hold position Zerglings. You don't hear that every day of the week. And I'm not seeing anything getting researched out of this. I think Jadong might be going for that Zergling Mutalisk style. What's this? What's this? Queen's Nest. Whoa! Okay. 
this is this is like a really historically significant moment okay like I'm gonna back up just 30 seconds right so we're currently at um, looks like you can't see the replay timer anywhere because I have it covered up because I don't want to add spoilers so we, we went 30 seconds into the past and I want to talk about the way that modern ZVP looks in modern Zerg vs Protoss no matter how good Protoss seems to be in terms of position or excuse me, no matter how bad of a position you feel like you're in if you're Protoss, Zerg's not doing too hot. Like, if you're Protoss, you're making out of two gateways, you have a lot of probes mining at all your various locations, and you got some Corsair numbers that are increasing, only at six right now, and it's easy to go, oh my gosh, the Zerg has this base, and the corner, and this base, and his main, and we did this examination when we looked at Bisu and Larva games, there's not that many drones here. I actually think it's exactly 12. There's four, yeah, and there's eight. In terms of drones here, not that many. S uh, just six. In terms of drones here, nine. And up here, nothing. So when you actually look at what Jadong has, he has a whole bunch of defensive positions and tools some Zerglings kind of scoping out the world, some Scourge scoping out the world, and nothing else, right? This is the sort of framework for typical Zerg vs. Protoss mid-game. And what Zergs now do is that even though they are spread across this very large area of map here, what Zergs nowadays do is they just research Hydra range and speed, research plus one weapons for Hydras, build hydras out of all their hatches until they have like two control groups and then they can sort of move freely out on the map and start getting control of positions and pressuring so it's weird you're you kind of set up as though you're going to play very defensively but you're zergs you easily can extend out if you have numbers so that's today's style what i find fascinating about the next 30 seconds is this is kind of indicative of when people were still playing around with this Holy shit, I can get four bases? Like, oh my gosh, I can not just get four bases, I can get four geysers. I can get four geysers up, man. So what players started to do... ...was, in these experimentations, they wouldn't be focusing on the mass unit thing, because that's just non-intuitive. This looks a lot like what some of the experimentation was. Like, oh, if I get carapace, and then I get a queen's nest really fast, I can just get, like... Ultralisks or cracklings, you know, like I, I would not be surprised to see no upgrades, no hydralisks, certainly no range. I would not be surprised to see none of that get built. In typical Bisu fashion, he manages to find a weak spot and starts breaking through. But like a good Zerg Jadong builds, only Zerglings. Zerglings are fast. If you wind up building Zerglings to defend up here and you get hit down here, it's very easy to reinforce so here's should be four gateway pressure yep an archon these who love doing this stuff where he just gets one archon and then he kind of goes zealots with some dts and some archons and he just expands it's a very safe expansion So a Zerg, after these attacks, you expect there's going to be expansion attempts, so you just try to pick off the Nexus or the Probe. Oh, is he going to try to go for this Archon? No. I can't believe he actually got that. Alright, 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 alright. So Carapace is almost done. This is another Evolution Chamber, so it probably is going to be Ultra Ling. There were a number of games where Bisu did this kind of style on Longinus, where he would have access to so much gas that he would just rush for Ultralisks in large numbers. But this is weird. Okay, so I don't know what Bisu or what Jadong's logic is here. I really don't. Um, I'm not saying he doesn't have one. I'm more of in the I can't procure it right now, so he probably has some plan that we'll see bake out as time goes on. He might be trying to get Defilers very, very quickly, for instance, and I guess that makes sense, but um, here's what I'm thinking. Goes for the Carapace first. Gets a seven, second Evolution Chamber in order to get melee upgrades. This is consistent. If you're skipping out on Hydralisk upgrades and going for a fast Hive, I expect that you're going for a melee unit build. 
you're going for cracklings fast you're going for melee and carapace but then this other evolution chamber came down and this hatch came down and lurker aspect got started regardless of what jadong's exact plan is jadong is clearly doing some things to do some immediate defense at the front Love Scourge Zergling in this phase of the game. For so many years, I was so uncomfortable with him, and then I just started to make myself do it, and it's just a dream come true, man. It's just so comfy. So comfy. There's the super fast adrenal glance. It's a creep colony for any sort of drops. Wow, really? He's rushing for defilers. This is really interesting. Also, during this time period, defiler usage started to become really typical in this matchup. For a long time, people just did not build Defilers that much in this matchup at all. They would instead more so go for large numbers of Ultralisks. Cracklings, Hydralisks, Drops, just more muscular forces. So Bisu's doing the thing that Bisu very much so popularized. You just get a small number of gateways. First four and then six. And then you expand. And last, you get the Robo Facility. For a long time, players would not ever expand unless they had that Robo Facility. So it looks like Jadong just rushed for the usual Hive Tech. Where he's getting everything except for Hydra Range and Speed. Which, as you can see, allowed him to apply no pressure. Yeah, some Zergans got in and killed an Archon, but meh. Meh, 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 meh. These things are so good. Ten Corsairs, man. And then Jadong will be Jadong. He's trying to find any opportunity window. And I will say, I'm I'm impressed with Jadong's ability to have sort of pre-established the defenses. Like, oh, dude, these Corsairs are coming in. But it's okay, we're still protected against any sort of weird DT drop. Same thing in the main base, right? And the timing of it was was pretty pretty thin. It was pretty nice, but I I just don't like being in this position if I'm Jadong. Like look at look at look at this map vision. He can see only here and only here. I mean he's literally playing they are billions, man. He can barely see, and then there's just swarms of zombies, man. There's bees floating in, flooding in. Using aggression to expand. Very modern Protoss move, but I'll just say Bisu did it first. BC totally didn't do it first, man. But he, he does it best. Seeing lurkers means he has to pull back. And now he's getting Hydralisk speed. Oh, that's interesting. Basically the super duper 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 defensive style. Alright, getting up to eight gateways. Getting up to eight. Oh my gosh, this poor Nexus. This is this is me. Okay, this is what I do. All right, all right. Is it? Listen, it's no shame o'clock. I don't give a damn, dude. Remember, remember. Look, listen. Um, I'm getting pretty close to getting to the end of a lot of the material that I want to talk about with Let's Learn Starcraft. So more and more, I'll just be doing reviews of games and stuff, and this gives me opportunities to tell stories when the clock strikes no shame o'clock. Mm. Ah. Listen, Zerg vs. Protoss, I always found to be a very difficult to wrap my head around matchup. Specifically because it's it, it's a much um, has much softer edges in terms of the judgment. Like, Zerg vs. Terran has hard edges. Like, you have three lurkers burrowed on the ramp. No marines can get up. Or, you have one lurker on the ramp. All the marines can get up, right? It's very big, spiky moments. And so I was able to learn Zerg vs. Terran... Um, pretty well on my own, but Zerg vs. Protoss I struggled like hell with, because you'd get in a fight, and I'd kill a lot, and he would kill a lot, and in the end, maybe he would be up a little bit, and I'd be like, okay, did I build the wrong units? Did I whiff out on an upgrade? Did I do everything right, and I miscontrolled it? Maybe did he control it well? It was like, hard for me to learn, so I'd always wind up in these positions where I was just behind, 
where build order wise, strategy wise, we'd be 15 minutes into the game and I'd just be, be behind. He'd have a better setup, better opportunity, be better in all ways, shapes, and forms. So I would do this shit, man. I would have, I mean, I had really good map awareness, so I'd just be like, all right, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna counterattack. I'm just gonna counterattack and try to kill off Nexuses, man. And then you could just do it, man. I still remember in a WCG 2006, I was against a strong Protoss named Slog, who, frankly, I feel like I was overall better than at the time, but he was really playing extremely well in these games. I was getting my ass kicked. So I just sent some groups of Zerglings here, some groups of Zerglings here, some groups of Zerglings here, and I just killed off three of his Nexuses, and I was like, oh! Oh! Really, 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 really nice! <laughs> and I, like, won that series, and I was, like, really ashamed that I go up to him, like, hey, hey, Slog! Hey, Andy! Oh, really sorry, man. Simulator coming up, leaving these behind in case of counterattack. See, this is... I find this formation so interesting. Where Zerg is defended up here. Ostensibly, the double bridge is the key defensive point. But, up here where Protoss is expanding, you sort of have like a little private attack route. And it's not very easily accessible by the Protoss army. Protoss has to cut all the way up in here. And I think this is a very smart decision, too, by Zerg right from the get-go. Uh, and I've made this mistake a lot, where if Protoss spawns here, you have the option, as a Zerg who's diagonally positioned on the map, you could build your third hatchery here, or you could build your third hatchery at the other expansion here, the other natural. And if you do this, you basically only have to defend this double bridge and this double bridge area. And you've locked down the map. But it's way easier for your opponent to expand. Whereas up here, if Protoss tries to take this expansion, you almost have like an already pre-built attack route. So this is a better first expansion location for Zerg relative to Protoss. Because it shuts down expansions when you start to get to 5-6. That is filthy dirty. Oh my gosh. The dirty Zerg. Dirty, filthy Zerg. So, I've, I've played as Zerg from this position a lot, and it's, I mean, I always just feel good. I just feel really, really, really good, um, unless one of those things happens. But I'm particularly curious as to how Bisu will manage to pull this off. I just really love the way he set this up, sweeping all over the middle of the map, applying pressure here, Corsair is pressuring up to here that allows him to pull a shuttle in like this and then up like that, really nice. Nice, pretty stuffs. Oh, the Zerg units are pathing exactly the way that Brood War intended them to be pathed. In random directions. See, this position is real obnoxious to try to hit on if you're BC man. But, um, in the few, very few games that I've played against Bisu, this is what always feels like garbage. You're doing stuff like this, you're maybe feeling good. But meanwhile, he's expanding again. If you look in his main base, he does not actually have comparatively that many gateways. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Protoss can support 8 gateways on 2 bases if it's saturated enough. And this is a 3rd, and this is a 4th, and Bisu just has 10 gateways. He can easily go to like 14 at this point in time, but he stays relatively low, focuses on harassing and pressuring. So he can just expand like crazy, and then he eventually winds up out-resourcing Zerg. It was an explosion of red. So annoying. So... This move by Jadong, it, it feels a little pointless, but it's totally not. Moving out to just get position onto the map because you, you, you saw my little mini map move earlier where I looked at this and like this was the extent of, of Jadong's vision. I like these sorts of moves just trying to push out, especially if you feel like you can get opportunistic trades. Often at the very least, you burrow, Protoss backs up, and you can take a little more ground. Rarely do you ever lose all your lurkers and hydras. And now Jadong can expand. Ooh, go Jadong! But he's lost a lot of drones, man. 
So this is where if you're Zerg, you start to become a little clued into, uh-oh, it looks like my opponent is way expanding crazy fast. The next steps that we'd anticipate from Bisu's build, if you watch the ZVP core strategy, is Reavers coming up. Reavers coming up. Uh, additional bases. And then, you know, High Templar DT defending these expansions. I always love small allocation of defensive units. So sick. So slick. Leave this on fastest. I'm always hesitant to do any aggressive movements like this. Just due to the fact that you can easily get stormed on. Stormed on, picked off. Small attempted counterattack by Bisu gets shut out by all these zealots. Gosh, Dark Swarm is just so strong. It's kind of funny nowadays, because I know that what Zergs do nowadays is they, they're pretty aggressive to get drop tech early on, which is what makes the... <clears throat> Which is what makes the Corsair so important for the entire duration of the of the uh, of the match. Goodbye. Yeah, just tech units out of this gateway. All right, guys, who who's winning? Who's gonna be winning this game? Hit me with it, man. We're doing two Jadong Bisu games on Electric Circuit. If I had to throw in for my horse right now. I, I would probably lean towards Bisu. Bisu is in a really dominating position right now. But this is the Jadong ZVP replay pack. I know that he has close to a 90% win rate in his practice games in ZVP. He's, he was just monstrous in this matchup. Oh, Bisu fans. Hit me with it, Bisu fans. This is the beauty of well-controlled Corsairs, is that they can't do much in the early game. Like, these Corsairs generally can maybe kill 3-4 Overlords. But, if you just keep them alive all game long, you just keep picking up Overlords. Keep picking them up. Keep picking them up. An interesting comment, OJ Hunt says, I feel like the battlefields in SC1 seem way larger than in SC2. In a literal physical sense, um, they're actually not. Like, the, the amount of space in StarCraft 1 maps is, is pretty similar to StarCraft 2, but due to the way that pathing works, things spread out a lot. Like, this is not, not that many units. Like, it looks like a little more than 12, say 16 uh, Zealots, 7 Dragoons. Four High Templar and an Archon. This is not that big of an army. A little over two and a half control groups or so. Um, but look at how much space it's taking up. Even these other things sort of tapering behind. And if you look at the Zerg side of things, this is just not that much supply. But small amounts of supply functionally spread out a lot more. And for, the, for that reason, um, in terms of the actual spacing, you'll have way big open spaces like this in the middle of maps in Brood War. Because you kind of need it, otherwise no one can get anywhere. Like, hilariously, Big Game Hunters is one of the worst maps ever. Because once you get to armies that are, like, more than 100 supply, you just can't move them anywhere. So as a result of the pathing, uh, the pathfinding, you wind up getting big spreads, and the maps kind of get designed around that. Also, the battles uh, it, it is a, one of the pieces that helps slow down the outcome of battles. Deathballing is just not really a thing in uh, Brood War. Well, I, I shouldn't say it's not a thing. It's not a common thing. Players don't just deathball all the time. There are there are strategies that have deathball in them as a core component, such as in Terran vs. Protoss, when you just macro on four bases and try to move out with one big push and end the game. But even then, that deathball push takes, takes some time. All right, so Jadong has played the last several minutes excellently. He's established defensive positions at the front here. And once you start having really solid defensive positions like this, or like this, it gives you comfort to take action. While that setup's happening, I love these tiny little forces. Just teensy little sets of links, one defiler moving out on flanks. Hard hugging to the sides of the map. Yeah, taking an opportunity to expand down here. 
Taking an opportunity to expand over here. For the longest time, Protosses would be almost unable to expand, and it would be about the, the Protoss with a more efficient, nimble force trying to build up against the Zerg that was building a super mobile, obnoxious containment force of Hydra Lurker with a handful of Zerglings. And nowadays, both players can just expand a shitload. Because players are much better now. This is something that I love so much about this matchup in late game. Lots of nice, juicy, meaty, meaningful attacking happening on multiple locations. This attack gets held off largely in part to this gateway. If you ignore, uh, you know, because you might look at the units as the sort of big treatment here, but this is why Protoss is build a gateway here and just build nothing but tech units. Dark Templar and High Templar constantly. It's sort of like focusing on just building the correct production structures in the correct places. We'll let um, Beast be able to defend this stuff adequately. And at the same time, another little small force coming over. Shooter! Just trying to prevent additional expanding. Oh my god, he just target fires the Nexus like a douche. <gasps> oh! 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 The tactics! Oh my god, Jadong is so good. Oh, what the hell? Oh my gosh, and he, he's got these three evolution chambers that are upgrading, so he's already at plus three carapace. Plus two. Damn, dude. The infinite value Corsairs saying, oh yes, of course you'd love to spread overlords out. Just, I love this. I love seeing very late game Corsairs still doing the good business. Something that's super cool about watching uh, Bisu play this is that he still has not yet gotten Reavers. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's, it's interesting to me, though. I would honestly want to build a robotics facility here and just churn out Reavers little by little. Hmm. Great, great position to defend from. This is this is a really crap angle where you have to come down and forward. But at first you don't succeed, brute force it. Oh dude. Zealots, these are three one one zealots. Beast is just going crazy making Zealot Archon. Still active Corsairs. This is the same set of Corsairs that he started the game with. Oh my god, Jadong is so good! He's so good at positioning huge armies like this. Just moving in from all these different angles. Dude, look at this! Oh my god, Jadong is so good! Well, that'll really take the wind out of your sails. This is part of the reason why Protosses tend to attack in from an angle that they can always retreat from. Because if you get to an angle where you can't retreat from, you either have won the game, or you can completely lose this army, completely lose all map control, and then you're kind of screwed. There's the Reavers getting made, man. There's a Reaver getting made. There's a Reaver getting made. Now we're Reavering. Another little tech gateway, building tech units. This is the obvious next set of targets, but Bisu's just, or Jadong's just going to hit from multiple angles. Attempt to drop over here. Jadong reacts too quickly because he's so good. These players are so good in this game. Oh my god. Oh! Oh! Now this expansion's going to die. Oh my gosh. This isn't over. Jadong has not unanimously won the video game. Bisu still does have four bases. Mr. Prodigious, happy 69 months. <laughs> happy 69. <laughs> this expansion looks a lot like my expansions when I'm getting a little stressed out. Alright, how does Bisu win this? Probably by incorporating Reavers into his Death Balls. He's getting shuttle speed, which is great. I'm looking at how, how can Protoss begin to apply pressure. Because Protoss in a defensive position pretty much loses to Zerg. 
pretty much. So, for the most part, in a game of Zergris Protoss, Protoss is just moving around the map, clearing stuff out, being awesome, and having presence, right? He's having an actual presence on the map. I don't mean like Santa Claus presence for any of you who like, uh, what is it, homonyms? Yeah, that's some good homonym humor. Woo! No, you know, he just moves out onto the map, has presence, so Zerg has to be cautious. And it's okay if both players are having presence, but it's not okay for the Zerg to be having it and the Protoss to be kind of defensively minded. Reminds me a lot, actually, if any of you watched the WCS series between Snoot and Special um, that just happened a few days ago at uh, WCS Leipzig. Special was just constantly moving out, constantly pressuring, constantly attacking. Sometimes Snoot would defend really well. Sometimes it would be kind of a tough defense. For the most part, um, Special was losing more than he was killing. But he was able to expand so much behind it that it didn't matter. I mean, look at this. We're 26 minutes into this game, and Bisu has quickly established these five bases and then has been unable to really do much at all. Although this is very dirty. This is a big army. So Jadon, by holding this position, by holding all these defensive positions up, this is this is kind of a nightmare to try to attack if you're Bisu. This is probably the best angle, though. It's enough space. This is tiny space. This is a little bit bigger of space. You have a really fast army, too. Where is he going to attack? Ooh. Oh, that's four hat or four cannons. I thought it was four hatcheries. This is a, a funny move that players do a lot. Often, um, there'll be like one zergling that is chilling here. Or zergling on patrol. So you build a bunch of cannons first out of vision range. And then you expand. Like right here, you can go like cannon, 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 and then nexus. And it's actually kind of obnoxious to kill. I'm so excited for an absolutely massive battle. So Reavers are amazing in this spot because they deal damage to units that are underneath Dark Swarm. Oh ho! And this Nidus Canal is a huge threat. So it's, uh, just blow it up. Just kill it. So Bisu's kind of broken through here. I say kind of because he's lost all his Zealots. And he had so many Zealots. So at this point, if you're Jadon, you got to start just, like, boxing units. Sending them over, man. This is a surprisingly sturdy army. Well, these Archons are about to die. If they were at full health, this would be like a really annoying army to try to break through. Storm, storm. With just so much stuff that you have to manage at this point in the game. So common to kind of biff on those storms. Expansion's done. Bisu's supplies looking mighty low. He's mined out. It is main. It is natural. It is third. Dude, this game is so good. This game is so awesome. Jadon's continue to expand outward. Continue to try to macro up. Zerg generally just does not have that many drones mining in various locations. They just have a lot of locations. <laughs> Continued swarms as L three one one almost three two two. Cracklings against zealots greatly favor the cracklings, like a lot. This is part of the reason why Jadon went for the carapace upgrade early on, is that you hit this power spike where you will always be able to go toe to toe with zealots. Oh, oh, and ah, oh gosh, it's so funny. In the very early days, like two thousand and one. The whole goal used to be to try to contain the Protoss on just his first base. 
Zerg would go two base, Protoss would go one base. And you would just try to defend as Zerg against that Protoss, trying to get his damn two bases up. Then as time went on, players figured out how to take a second expansion as Protoss pretty much instantly. So Zergs would go three base and try to contain Protoss on two base. And just starve them. Just wait for them to run out of money on two base. And now here in this 2010 game, we have Jadong starving the Protoss on five bases. <laughs> Look at this Jadong scoops underneath here to hold these positions. Beast is trying to break through. There's no way Beast can win this game. There's literally no way, man. There's a lot of units, though. Damn. So many lurkers, though. Ooh. Protoss had it all and went broke, much like a Bitcoin trader. Take that, Bitcoin traders. Anyone here into crypto? Anyone real into cryptocurrencies? What a game, by the way. Woo! another game between Bisu and Jadong. Uh, by the way, uh, in case any of you are curious, uh, you can look up the Zimp, Z-I-M-P, Zimp Replay Packs Team Liquid to find all these games that I'm looking at. Let's go back to Circuit Breaker. Let's see. Against Mr. Bisuit. What is to come? Circuit Breaker again. Jadong, one, two, three, two, three, one, one, two, one. So, the good old Nexus, the good old Hatchery, the game begins. Quite a fan of these positions as Zerg, because you're going to expand here, no matter what. And it's very clear that this is going to be where your uh, second big extension is, or your third hatch is. And so you just automatically, by default, start close enough to be able to walk t straight to the Protoss fourth base. It's great! All right, let's zoom past the start. It's so weird to see Hatch first in this matchup. So if you're Bisu, and I don't know if these two games were consecutive, they're listed as though they are consecutive matches. So, you know, assuming that these are indexed correctly, this game happened at the immediately after the one we just watched. So if you're Bisu, you might be going, you know what, I tried that cannon rush, it didn't really do anything, so let me just do it standard. Let me just build the forge, see what you're doing, and if you're not doing something aggressive, dude, I'm just going to build a gateway right away. Look at your cannon afterwards, super duper, ultra fast cybernetics core. Uh, by the way, th th this is just a word of caution, often players will have build orders that are based around the timing of certain structures. Uh, like, obviously, right when your gateway finishes, immediately start the cybernetics core. Right when the cybernetics core is finished, immediately build a stargate in the main base. And these are, these are fine sequencings to do. But there's some other timings that are relative. Like, very often, if you are going for forge first, you build a cannon, and then you build a gateway, typically you can build the geyser before the second geyser before your cybernetics core is done but if you're going for the gateway first if you build the cybernetics core don't build this geyser before the cybernetics core is done because it will mess up your timing because you can't if you're getting one thing earlier than normal you have to account for the other things that you get relative to that does that make sense oh gosh let me try this one more time Often people will do the timings of certain buildings relative to other buildings. Like, for this thing, hey, I'll always build my second gas geyser when my cybernetics core is halfway done. That's great. 
until you start fiddling with the timing of when you start that cybernetics core. So just don't build, if you're building your gateways early, don't build your second gas too early. That's all I'm trying to say. All right. Okay, I kept making a box for the cybernetics core here. Yeah, by the way, this cybernetics core <laughs> Bisu was very famous for building the cybernetics core and starting his second gas before it was done. In 2007, Noni and I actually did analysis, and the big thing that Noni always wanted to analyze and talk about as being this most significant uh, change was this assimilator timing getting uh, constructed so early. And there's some builds where you don't get it this early, but again, the whole idea of the relative timing, if you're getting this and your Stargate slower. You need to adjust the timing of your second gas geyser. Ah, uh, Zerg layer. All right, Protoss Stargates. Coming up. Alright, so Bisu very famously would get this gas geyser ultra early. A lot of times people wouldn't get this gas geyser very fast because they would be wanting to build like four gateways, get zealots with speed, and move out. But Bisu uses all this gas. He gets like plus one weapons. He starts getting Corsairs. He also gets a Citadel. Everything going on in Camp Dong is looking as expected. Ooh, look at the lovely little speed zerglings being speedy. Ooh. All right. The Zergeg. That sure he's going down. Oh, dude, look at Citadel at the front. What a baller ball haver. This guy's made of balls. He's made of Bisus. Given that the Citadel is this close to the front, I'm really curious if he's just going to be going straight for Dark Templar. Often this double gateway right here is indicative of someone wanting to build Dark Templar into pressure quickly. He hasn't even done anything yet. He just has it. Frankly, at this point in the game, I still think that Bisu maybe got this a little soon. It's 300 gas. He'll certainly spend it all. Scourgey's coming up. This is why the Zergies rush for Scourgey's. Gosh, look at this. At 35 supply. He's already building everything. Single obnoxious zealot. And oh, Jadong pulls a Jadong. Oh my gosh, guys. I'm so embarrassed. As an observer, oh, my career is over. I'll never be Funka. Typically getting around 10 Zerglings, no matter what, is just great easily lets you respond to weird things like a zealot moving out you can kill it off or if you smell weakness you can just storm the front see i never do this jadong is so good about this oh bisu was not paying attention dude bisu was focused here man that's a rare comment to make bisu wasn't paying attention Everything is seen. Oh no. Probably not the hugest deal if you're Bisu. But it definitely sucks. Probably gonna lose four, five probes here. Oh. Miscontrolled by the Dong. No big deal. Plus one carapace in order to prepare for the massive uh, air stuffsing. And there's been basically no defense built. He's gotta build this real soon. Yep. And, yep. Man, that is a really fast Zell leg speed. Jeez. Jadong is murdering in this game. Corsair count, I think, is still just at one or two now? Two? Ugh. Zealot's moving out. We put lots of stock in these Zealots. Plus one weapons. Bisu normally gets this first. 
uh, in 2017, I should say. 2017, Bisu gets this thing as, like, his first upgrade. When that thing, when that Cybernetics Core is finished, he just bangs out the plus one instantly. Hydra Den number one. Hydra Den number two. Looks like just an emergency Hydra Den. Drones being produced. Everything's great in Camp Zerg. And it's so funny because, like, I've, I've done this countless many games as a Zerg, so it's just not as interesting to me as looking at what's going on in Camp Protoss. Oh, there was a Twi Templar Archives built. I couldn't quite see it when I had, like, this angle. But, uh, knowing Bisu, he's going to morph this into an Archon. Not going to get the Storm. He's going to get some DTs and some Speed Zelts, and he's going to move out here and take a third. So it looks like he's just trying to right-click on these drones in order to break up into the main base. And now each player has had the opponent's Tier 1 units storm up the ramp. And even though Plus 1 Zealots are so good and so efficient against Zerglings, the best thing to do early game against is just build Zerglings. Look at this. Yeah, you lost a few inefficient trades, but then you easily cleaned it up, no problem. And now you have six hatcheries. Look, look at how well Turtle Jadong is. Three sunkens at each location. Oof. Oof. These little overlords are very vulnerable to Corsairs, but only just now are there a reasonable number of Corsairs out. Well, good old Archon speed lock plus two coming up. Love the rate at which Bisu gets this plus two stuff. This is actually, like, my favorite part about going for this, uh, Speed Zealots, is you just get the ability to get plus two so fast. And as someone who loses a lot, plus two Protoss units, I think it's pretty powerful. Spore Colonies to protect the Overlords. We could use Scourge, but, um, ordinarily you just don't have more than one Geyser for a while. You get the second Geyser pretty late. I mean, look at this one. Already has 2,000 mined. So it's like 300. It's hardly been used. This hasn't been used. This hasn't been used. You just need a lot of minerals, but you still want to be greedy and get enough gas. So that's why I use Spore Colonies to defend. And the Scourge are kind of like support units here. One obnoxious Dark Templar just kind of hanging out mid-map. Obnoxious Corsairs. Gonna respond to that Overlord right away. Ah, you made yourself vulnerable. Ah, great. More High Templar action on the route. I don't know if Storm is done yet. I wasn't looking for that. But Bisu's doing pretty much the same style. Jadong's doing pretty much the same style. After this game, I want to note that we're going to look at a much different map. map called Benzene. Which was used during the 2010 tournament era. Um... Watch a few of Jadong's games on there too. Plays extraordinarily differently. Alright, so we have the period of build up. Where no one's doing much of anything. Just zealots and more Corsairs being built. How many Corsairs does Bisu have? He's 10 going to 11. Continue to do these slam ends. At this point in the game, Protoss can actually begin to build a lot of Dragoons and just start applying a pressure to these fronts. But one thing that's really kind of amazing about uh, good Protosses is that they'll see this wall of buildings and sunken colonies and just be able to judge, oh yeah, I can kill that. Here Bisu's just jamming himself right in there. These two Archons are the dumbest Archons. They are the most grounded Archons. Sunken colonies just target firing onto them, no problem. The ultra high value Corsairs show up. This looks so bad for Bisu. Or for Jadong. But guys, doesn't this look horrible for Bisu where there's no units to defend and he's getting free overlord kills? Oh, it looks so bad. Yeah, this looks this looks very dire for Bisu. JK. This looks super bad for Jadong. He's had his natural broken. He's going to lose all this stuff. His main base is possibly going to die, but as long as you're still making lots of Zerglings, very mobile forces, super, super powerful, you can just continue to rally and defend. Well, 
when in doubt, run from lurkers and join the main bases. These two transitions out of these things so well. Storm coming up. Templar. Dragoon range. Ooh, that's plus three. Yeah. Where's Dragoon range? There it is. Bisu has to rebuild some zealots initially. Or he could, you know, foreseeably pull these back. But Dragoons. Ooh, that's going to be scary for Mr. J. Dong. Although it's just really weird to see a uh, Zerg who both expands to four total locations and gets a hive this quickly. This is like a very weird little style. But I, I mean, Jay Yun does this a reasonable percentage of the time. Aha, you have saved your friends, your very eggy leggy friends. Corsairs continue to patrol out, and I feel like the effect of Corsairs is so subtle that it really can never be understated. Like, if you again look at the vision of Jadong after all said and done, it's basically nothing outside of the immediate area around his bases. Things like this, this is not going to last long. He's just going to like turn right back around and start killing that. Yep. Zealot's heading in just to protect. Is this where the Dragoon massing begins? Why, I think it is. Zealot's happily chilling right over the Overlord. I'd be very curious to see. Is there... Is there any defiler? Are there any defilers? No defilers? Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. So these little tiny attacks, I feel like, are almost universally wasteful for Zerg. It always looks like there's, oh, there's some way I can get a big hit off on the Zealots, but, but this did not help. This just threw away some units that would have been way more beneficial should there have been a wait for, uh, Oh, wait, oh, wait, never mind, never mind, never mind. He has cracklings. He has crackling upgrades. I forgot. I thought these were just normal zerglings. I forgot that these are infinilings. Never mind, that's totally a legitimate attack. Look at it. Look at it break through. I was, like, watching the zerg army win. I was like, this, this zerg army should not be winning this fight. But of course, they're cracklings. Yeah, of course, cracklings are amazing. And then what you do is when you break through this, and you right-click on the nexus and amazingly kill it, despite the fact that there's DTs and zealots right there. Oh... Same stuff again. Sweeping with the air units to maximize the chance that this drop succeeds. 71. Okay. Out of energy. <laughs> so the Dragoon Flood cannot quite begin yet. Bisu needs to continue to build basically only Zealots. So he can continue to reinforce this quickly enough. This is very cute. Oof. He only got one? Oh, that's so unfair. It's kind of a weird game because it looks like Jadong is doing really well in terms of these battles and these exchanges. Now that he's defended this expansion. But really, Bisu has almost nothing. He has basically what you see. He's very WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get, by the way. <laughs> He's not having enough energy. And yet again, I look at this and I say, man, Bisu's looking pretty good. This is a pretty good situation to be in if you're Bisu. Still almost only Zealots. And Zealots are really necessary as a transitional unit. You can't just start building Dragoons, like from zero units to 12 Dragoons, and then start adding in stuff to there. Dragoons in small numbers just get owned. If you have a huge army, you eventually want Zealots out of there. You want things like Archons and Dragoons and High Templar and Dark Templar and Reavers. But as you're building up, I mean, you can just get to 200 supply so quickly on Zealot Archon.
This is also a really interesting way to apply pressure. You just sit here. And there's no way he can do anything about it because he doesn't have Scourge. They can uh, approach this position. So Jadong's doing his bridge defense stuffs. Not exactly a double pronged attack. Kind of a, an attack and then an attack. Nice. Yeah, there's the Defilers coming out. Yeah, there's Consume almost done. Yeah, there's those upgrades coming up. In the modern era, I like much more about, you know, the way that Hero's doing it. Like, by Hero does these kinds of defenses. Ooh! Where he gets the Defilers later, but builds way more Hydras earlier on. Oh my gosh, is he going to lose this again? Oh my god. Like so many units that got jammed through there. Only about one more storm left. Well, I guess on the workers is okay. Cracklings are so strong. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Cracklings are the most re stupid unit. The most unreasonably broken. <laughs> Powerful thing. And I'm Zerg, man. I'm Zerg. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy to have them. But they are so stupidly powerfully... Oh my gosh, it's so ridiculous. Alright. Oh, that was a good storm drop. Bisu is just surgical with this, man. But Jadong, she keeps expanding. Keeps on expanding, keeps that hope holding on. This is like the true Turtle Zerg ultra long style. Oh, it's, it is so hard to be a Zerg unit in this game. No matter what Zerg unit you are, man. Overlords. <laughs> Lurkers, Zerglings. At least there's no feedback on High Templar, man. I'm uh, I'm so happy that StarCraft II change didn't get its way into, into Brood War. That would have been the worst, roughest life. So given that this is mostly a Zealot Archon army... Plague and Dark Swarm have enormous value. One Plague. Get out of there. This is so good. And now Beast is building Reavers. Oh, so timely. So good. High Templar gets more kills. Dude, Crackling Lurker with Plagues? It's just so strong. It still looks a lot like Beast's oneness. Jadong is just having the hardest time. But he does have Crackling Lurker. Dude, watching good players play is just marvelous. Like, if you watch a slightly less good Protoss, he just would not have this expansion at all. I mean, have his expansions. Like, look at this. Look at this counterattack. All the lings get rallied down to the bottom. Small number of Hydra Defiler Lurker up to the top. Oh, it's so glorious. Now the Zerglings are smelling opportunity. Five Archons being produced. Woo! Reavers are so needed. The Reavers are so necessary. Okay, so it's just infinite cracklings pouring in. These Zealots are doomed, man. These are the most doomed Zealots. I've never seen such dead Zealots in my life. They're already dead on my screen. I don't know if it's gotten to you yet. And there they all are, dead. Archons trying to step in. Nope. Not going to do it. One Dark Swarm. Lamb. I think it's it's just got to be Reavers and Dark Templar and Zealots and Dragoons, man. It's just got to be, like, smaller numbers of Zealots, more power units, like Riva. This 
expansion is just abandoned. Alright, so Protoss, Protoss has to find a window. Zerg, amazingly, has not just stabilized, but has made enough counterattacking that Bisu's in terrible shape. He's lost his fourth gas, down to three. We're just defending of these positions. This is the most clutch Nidus Canal play. Continue to pull back. It looks just expand. He's just constantly expanding. This is weird counterpoint style where you just defend and attack where the Protoss army isn't. And then while the Protoss is dealing with that attack, you should expand a little more. So good. Plague going down. Oh my gosh. Plague on everything. I can't believe Plague ever got printed. That ability is ridiculous, man. Like, you think Dota 2 abilities are powerful, man. Brutal War abilities are the most ridiculous, unfair, insane things. Did you know Zealots cost 100 minerals? Like, that is ridiculous. a lot of lurkers. I think there's going to be a lot of dead zealots here soon. Oh, look at how patient Jadong is with his lurker burrows. Just very carefully waits until they're all at good angles. This is a really bad burrow, though. All stacked on top of each other. Well, I guess there's just no energy. And Jadong checks the bottom. Dude, I am in awe of Jadong. He is so good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god. Shoot. 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 Oh, Reavers are so dumb. Oh, why do they have these units in the game? They never do anything they're supposed to do. Bisu's actually low on observers. He's low on minerals, he's low on everything. Jadong still has, like, his main, his natural, his mineral natural here, this other natural, this other main, this other mineral natural. Only this is getting close to mined out. I guess this too. Oh, look at this abusive positioning. My mouth is so wide open right now, I can't believe it. Oh my gosh. Jadon won this game? I don't believe that. I mean, that's gonna be good. I don't know if it's gonna be enough. So right now, Bisu's entire life is just defending this expansion. That's it. That is his one purpose. He's gonna grow up and be a fourth defender. That's his whole life! Perhaps just a few too many zealots, not transitioning to dragoons well enough. Because there's just a few lurkers under a swarm. What's a zealot to do? Fight lurkers head on? No, you're crazy. Oh gosh, he's gonna be able to dark swarm again. No, he's not. All the defilers are dead. <laughs> and he's still checking this bottom right side. That is so good. Let me get this out of the way. While the non-stop battling is happening, both players have the wherewithal to be able to focus in all the locations at once because they're they're all they're all Cyberdyne systems. They're Prothean. They're not normal, man. Now the scourge. Oof. Slow walking reavers. Oh, we managed to get a bunch. We managed to get eight. Dark Templar in these really late game situations are often very nice pickups in small numbers, just because they deal so much damage under swarm. I cannot believe Jadong won both of those games. He's just, he's so ridiculously good. 
Um, I want to switch to a different map. Uh, that he was playing on a map called Benzene. It's a little bit of a weird map. It's a two-player map. I'm going to watch a game between... Uh, where is this game? Jadong and Rain. Rain is in the StarCraft two-player Rain. This is back when he was still StarCraft one-player. And look at that. By Rain. So this map is... It's interesting. It's a two-player map. So you have a big, wide-open main. Gas, pretty good defense from air. This is very defendable. Uh, easily defendable natural. It has a really sort of long, thin choke. But remember, it, this is a two-player map, so there's no matching uh, expansions. You have this third that's very open. You can see it even has this weird little backdoor path. So you can break down this power generator to get backdoor access to here. It's not really relevant um, in the early stages of the game, but down here you have this not very mineral heavy. You'll see there's seven minerals and uh, a geyser here, but you can defend this very easily as Zerg or Protoss. So you can sort of see that like here is a big convergence point for battles because everything up here is a big one big long ridge. So here's a real convergence point like you would rally to here or rally to here. And then you just have a little defensive position to hold this back expansion. You'd have it all connected because you've destroyed this. And so this is kind of like what your side of the map looks like. As you move out more, you actually get like a full base. Like, look at this. This has eight mineral patches and one geyser. So that's great. And has a large open area. But a lot of these two-player maps have unbelievably interesting centers. Where here... Across this double bridge, this is a ramp up to a big high ground. And then it goes down ramp, up ramp, big high ground. So weirdly, what winds up happening is if you're a Zerg here, you kind of wind up expanding down and down and down into this expansion in the corner. Up through here, and this is the easiest location for you to break. This ramp. You have lots of space here to position your army. Lots of space here to make an invasion up. And then you can control this high ground pod. And technically you do have access to your opponent's uh, natural or mineral expansion here. But these double bridges are very hard to break across. So the easiest way to do that is to go down up onto this high ground pod again. Look at how much space there is to do this. And then to invade downward into his theoretically fourth gas expansion. Off the top and bottom, there's also these very tiny expansions. Six minerals in a geyser, and six minerals in a geyser. And if I'm Zerg, and I'm thinking super long term, basically, I'm just trying to take this, or secure this, and then take this or secure this. This is, this is my long term game plan, is to split the map in half, and then just get that top and bottom thing. And if I'm here, and I'm able to apply pressure, great. But really, it's the control of this. So Guardians shooting at that while I have, like, you know, Spore Colonies and other things there. I I genuinely think, though, we will not actually get that far in this game. Oops, oops. Doom, doom, bam. Because this is during the period of time when Jadong was just, like, a monster. And on this map, you, you don't really have the ability to do this super turtley style. So despite the fact that there's very tight uh, chokes at the front, and there's this really circuitous path early game, when you have small numbers of units, it's very easy to just go from bridge to bridge. Jadong, going hatchery first. So crazy to see. So Rain responds with Nexus first. Oh, the greediest of all Zerg openings versus the greediest of all Protoss openings. It's so funny, man. Is he going to go Gateway? No, he's going to go Forge, but immediately Gateway thereafter. Dude, that's so greedy, man. Doesn't even have to build another pylon. Now what's interesting is that uh, on a lot of these maps, like this is true even on match point, on these two-player maps, if you're Zerg, do you just you just go take the other gas base? You just go expand far away. We already saw that you can defend it on the uh, the other maps. Fast cyber core. If you go Nexus first, you don't need to build a second pylon, but sometimes you wish you had one because. You gotta build all your tech structure in one location.
So everything's looking pretty normal. We'll, we'll fully expect for Jadong to just rush for building a Spire. We'll fully expect Rain to be getting something like High Templar, or excuse me, Templar Archives, or Plus One Zealot. Oh, interesting. It looks as though Rain is going for Corsair Reaver. Super intriguing. Yeah, when you have these really difficult to push into, sort of like tube chokes, you have lots of clustering with your Hydralisks. Easy to break through. Plus one uh, weapon. So this isn't Corsair Reaver super hard, super full all game long. This is just like opening as Corsair Reaver, and then maybe transitioning. So Jadon's getting his hatcheries. And we're going to see the sort of emergence of really modern ZVP, where you just get Hydras, and you get Evolution Chamber. Yeah, there's a Hydra list down. Down here, you're gonna get an Evolution Chamber. Yeah. There's your Robo Bay. Oh, this is really sexy. You can do this on um, Blue Storm. Can you do it on Match Point? Uh, it's, it's harder to do on Match Point, but. This is a really tight choke. So a lot of times you can open up with Corsair Reaver for pressure, and then you can shuttle Reavers right here, expand, wall this off, while you're going sort of like just usual High Templar stuff. So then you have a like completely unbreakable expansion here with Reavers, Cannons, and High Templar. And then you can expand out normally. Again, it's a way too early game, fight against that super late game plan you heard me talk about. Late game, if you're Zerg, you just want to be controlling those two bases. So here it is. Here's your very modern late, or, uh, your very modern mid-game ZVP. You have two hatches here, two hatches here, a sixth macro hatch somewhere else, and the one in your main base. You'll notice that there's, there's no sunken colonies, there's no additional defense. It's just rallied hydras. Rain picking off as much as he can uh, with these Corsairs. Even though it's an opening for Reavers, Reavers are still, uh, you know, not being nasty. Just a few, few going to get peppered down. And Bisu's just getting so many Hydralisks, man. For the longest time, it just feels so uncomfortable to do nothing but build Hydralisks for a really long time. But the Hydralisks are getting coupled with this incredibly nice scouting by these Zerglings. Well, if Protoss tries to expand here, you can hit from Hydralisks from these small bridges from all angles. And you get real coverage. And it's super obnoxious to fight against. This is part of the reason why it makes sense that Rain is opening with such a AoE-focused start. He's getting Dark Templar and High Templar and Reavers. And he's going to try to apply pressure, but he has all these defensive tools back home. So leg speed coming up, so that way he has like a full rounded army. Still just Hydralisks being produced. Rain slipping the shuttle underneath so that it can't be picked off. Dangerous to go for anything too aggressive. Rain calmly just lifts up and walks away. Jadon calmly just pulls his drones off, no problem. Almost loses the shuttle, but doesn't lose the shuttle. It is time to come home, though. Teensy little forces getting masked up. And, believe it or not, man, Zealot Reaver is pretty good against huge numbers of Hydralisks. It, it's pretty nice to have, but there's no speed yet. So this is... This is what I was talking about. Like, we're at 9 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Let's just go to 9 minutes into the game. At this point in the time, if I just go to the Jadon cam... Again, super duper big discomfort if I'm the Zerg player. But that's like the 2004 and 5 discomfort. Now, with all these Zerglings burrowed... Look at these burrowed lings being very helpful for revealing what's going on. 
I do think Jadon needs to have a thing here. He almost lost a game against Bisu on Blue Storm due to that error. Yeah, now look at these swarms of Hydrals coming out. I mean, there's there's just so many. So it looks like Rain is actually going to try to go for this huge Dark Templar drop in the main base. That might actually work. Oh, shit. Guys, if you're ever unsure of what your opponent's doing, if you ever think that what he's doing is weird, and you're not sure what his plan is, just go fucking kill him. You know what I mean? What if your opponent goes Corsair into Reaver and then follows up with DT drops? Oh, are you building Hydras? Yeah, dude, just, just go kill him. Just go kill him. Yeah, look at this. This... This is going to deal huge damage. And Protoss is also going to immediately lose the entire game. Look at this. Look at this, man. Games like these are part of what led Jadong to have such a high win rate in Zerg vs. Protoss during this period. And also why players stopped playing so turtly as Zerg. If you just have six hatches making stuff, you can easily... Go kill your opponent when you're a little confused of what he's doing. Or at the very least, cause him to have to have lots and lots of units. Let's go back and watch another map match on Benzene. This is game two between Rain and Jadon. I'm going to go through the start of the game very quickly, so that way we can watch yet more Benzene games. Oh my gosh, it's, it is the glorious Overpool opening. Yes. Yes. Forge. Nexus going down. Oh, is it a Nexus first? I, I do declare I think it is. Nah, it looks like Forge. So, Cannon goes down. Nexus goes down. Third hatchery at third. It's down in the corner. Early double expand. So pretty much just gonna speed past this part in the game. God, Shadong is so tenacious with stuff like that. Like you're just you're not supposed to march your Zerglings in like that, and Jadong just always does it. You've heard of my micro videos. These are the most vulnerable probes, the one that are mining gas. Farthest away from all the rest of the probes. So here we have a Protoss player literally not mining gas against a Zerg player. It's so good. It's poetic, really. In the meanwhile, layer, Zergling speed, drones being produced. Looks like a real genuine adult Zerg. Dragoon is an interesting touch. Um, obviously, it can shoot down overlords, but I'd say more importantly, it can kill these zerglings. They're getting a surprising number of kills. All right, does the overlord get away or not? Does the overlord get away or not? It does. I get real greedy from the Protoss man. I'm gonna send this all the way around the entire map. And did Jaeong really get more zerglings in here, man? Are we serious? Well, there's the Robo facility that is again getting spotted. This this photon cannon is not actually that wasteful. It will certainly shut down the Zergling harassment entirely, but also being able to retreat into your main base with Corsairs and have that cannon there to cover is is so helpful. Robo coming up. You'll note that these building placements are really similar in this game. Like, Rain is one of those players that's really strict with his placement. Very consistent. Keeps it super organized. See, this game is so similar. I'm, I, it's like I almost get worried that we're somehow watching the exact same game again. Did I, like, seriously open up the same match? I don't think I did. 
I dare say, I don't think that I did. It's so funny, just reanalyze the same game two times. Now here we go. Gosh, Scourge are just so good. So little moves like this. Once upon a time, we're considered very, very strong. Uh, if the Zerg player is starting to build up Hydralisks, sometimes he's a little low on Hydra units, uh, unit counts. And so these can actually be a little more potent. But a lot of modern Zergs will just see this and build Zerglings instead, to ensure that all this stuff gets surrounded and dies. You can see that Jayong already still had enough Hydras and Lynx, and defended it extremely easily. Bringing back the selection tab. Alright, Templar Archives. Here we go. So we're seeing a similar follow up by Rain, where he's still getting the Reaver, he's still getting the shuttle speed, he's still gonna try to do harassment. He had to unload it so he could build scarabs. Who doesn't love forgetting to make scarabs? Scouting Scourge. Primarily trying to get a sense of what the gateway count is. If it hovers around and finds only four, you're pretty comfortable as Zerg. You don't need to be massing that hard. You can return to drone production, you can take a base, things like that. But if you see like six, probably gonna get attacked sometime soon. You might want to invest in like lurkers. Let's follow the big action item right now. Over on, on Camp Jadong, he's building Hydras. There's nothing else happening here that's really significant. Yeah, I mean, I guess the Sunken Colony's a little bit cute, but it, it's, just, it's just Hydras. That's it. Hydras and getting a Gas Geyser. And then soon enough, Lurkers will be en route. But the positioning is just immaculate. This is really nice, expanding behind this. Uh, if you're ever trying to do this, where you're harassing and expanding behind, word of word of caution: send your forces in a retreat, then come back and build, and then return and move them forward again. It's really easy to be that guy that's like moving up to this location. You like right click here, come back, build stuff, come back. Oh, I lost my stuff. Like, if you're in a position like this, and you want to go back and build the Nexus, click here, and then go back and build, and then come back. It's a very nice hit. I gotta say, I, 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 it, it sounds stupid to say, but I sometimes just forget that you can... You can kill units with Reavers, you don't always have to kill drones. Or you can kill nothing with Reavers, that's also very legitimate. So this hasn't even begun yet, oh gosh. Oh gosh, dealt with leg speed getting done, oh gosh. I looked away for a second. Where's, where's the shuttle? Did the shuttle die? Is the shuttle dead? Oh god, you guys. I gotta rewind. You guys! I don't wanna look. Okay, so I saw this. Ah. Uh. Oh, everything's terrible! Yeah, that's... Oh, that's so... Uh, so this is a lot of speed zelts. There's one reaver here. Shuttle being rebuilt. More speed zelts en route. 
Dark Templar here. Allegedly for that follow-up drop. But with like so many Hydras. I think the only way that Rain stays alive here is if there's four Dark Templar. Jadong tries to target down the Dark Templar. But Reaver Zealot is pretty pretty good against Hydralisks, honestly. Until the uh, Zealot count gets low. <laughs> this is such a desperate situation for Rain. Because, like... Yeah, the... It looks like Rain is successfully going to defend this, and he's even going to get some extra Overlord pickups. While all this is happening, another base going down. More Hydra is coming out. Jadong's also stockpiling his gas. He's getting Lurkers. He's getting Hive. I would really not be surprised to see Jadong just make another attack and succeed with it, or wait until Defilers make an attack like that and succeed with it. Because Protoss did all that fighting and just got a few more mineral patches. Rain did have saved up a ton of Vespine. So he now is making six High Templar. Looks like he is done with Storm. This is increasingly looking more comfortable for Rain, but I wouldn't necessarily say he has an advantage. I really think Jadong is in a nice spot. All comes down to the Reva control. All the usual things being rounded out. It's kind of funny to note that, like, six gateways, same count of gateways that Bisu had in the previous games. But Bisu was on four, expanded, got six, and then expanded again. And here you see Rain just kind of going to six and trying to go expand, expand. I don't want to necessarily make any qualitative judgment and say that, like, oh yeah, new six gateways is bad. But more like an observation, where if you are starting off and building quite a lot of gateways initially, it eats into your money a pretty good amount. It's very hard to add additional gateways on until you secure sometimes two extra bases. This is a very hefty drop. Oh, what the? What? Does he not have energy? What happened? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know what happened here, man. Get out of here. Just go home. Just go home. Does he not have Storm? Oh, he forgot Storm. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. That's so embarrassing. Have you ever done a Storm drop and you don't have Storm? It's just a drop. It's just, like, it's just a High Templar. Hello drop. That's so... Oh, my gosh. Look at that. He just started the Storm. <gasps> oh, my God. I can't believe he did that. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I guess, I guess if you want evidence of getting flustered from someone as talented as Rain Man, I got it for you right here. There it is. There's a guy who did a storm drop with no storm. Woo! Alright. Alright. Many Dragoons being produced. Oh, thank goodness. We kind of have a rounded out army. And I'd actually say this is looking generally positive for Rain. Here's this fourth hatch going down. Do these have any drop? No, drop is being researched though. And Jadong yet again has his triple evolution chamber. He's getting his plague. He's flooding out all his units. He's just, he's just being good. He's just being an excellent bear. Oof. How do you think Storm Drop 2 is going to go? Oh, it goes insanely well. Holy shit, that went great. Wow. Rain is so good. Oh, Rain, that was awesome, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Going to need to get his robotics facility. He's queuing up as many observers as I would like to in my games of Protoss where I'm panicking. 
Love these types of movements. Sweep in the middle of the map. No zerglings, no nothing. We good? We good? No nothing? Good. Good. No lurkers just hanging out. Applying pressure to Reaver, Zealot, Dragoon. So you heard me talk about how important I think it is to have shuttles by the time there's defilers. If you do a Reaver... Oh, excuse me. It's so important to have Reavers by the time defilers come out. And if you do these openings that involve getting a robotics facility, they can be a little flimsy at the start, but you kind of already have a lot of the key tech done by the time you get to the late game. Jadong is kind of hinting he wants to step into motion. But there's nothing really committal yet. Just a few attempted Zergling runbys that Rain very astutely intercepts. This is a very bad angle for Rain. What is Rain doing? Oh! Rain. Rain. Rain, be careful. Oh my gosh, Rain is... He's committed his whole army across a thin bridge into Lurkers with Plague. Oh. Oh my gosh, and it's just a mineral-only expansion. I don't think this is a good... Oh my god. He lost a lot there, man. He lost a ton of stuff and got himself all clustered straight up, dude. Oh my gosh, Jao's hitting from all sides. Oh! It's an awfully limp showing. It's a very limp showing, I will say, I will admit. One final game, huh? One final game for the fun. Loading the replay. Going to Jadon. Going to Matt Benzine. I heard his games against Sky were excellent. Let's go ahead and go to 3388. Um, so this is a Hwasong Oz Protoss by the name of Sky, who was the only Protoss player who was able to give Jadong pretty much any run for his money. Had a losing record, but a lot of people had records of like 3 and 18 against Jadong. Sky was more like 10 and 20. Let's take a look at what Sky did, what his style is that gave Jadong some troubles. I just cannot believe that attack. That was like so bad. So super, I mean, this is, this is the epitome of greed. Look at this. Gate, Forge, Cybernetics Core. <laughs> Spawning pool's done, man. There's no cannon started. Dude, that's so funny. This is so greedy as Protoss. I can't even believe it. Oh my god, no way. <laughs> it's not gonna give him that huge of an advantage, but it's just like, it's just like so, so unnecessary. Alright, so what's what's coming up next? Oh, interesting. Oh, how interesting. A Citadel of a Dune. So we really don't see uh, Citadels first pretty much ever. There's the Stargate coming up second. Okay. But this, this definitely gets my alarm bells going off. Why would you get a Citadel so fast like that? I, I don't even know how the economics of it worked out. I think you actually struggled to have the money to do things that you want to do. But okay, it looks like a very, very, very fast Dark Templar play. We also have Zispael. Extra hatcheries. This is great. This is exactly Zerg normal stuff. We're not going to see a... Generally, you don't see the geyser built until there's five, six hatches started. There's the double DT. Any Corsairs being made? Yeah, a few Corsairs being made. So these are coming unusually early. Now, if you're a if you're a very good Zerg, you're gonna notice that there was a ripple there. Oh, this guy's walled in. Yeah, so Jadong notices and builds another Overlord right away. Overlord speed, quick response, hydraulic speed, Overlord's positioned everywhere. Oh, this is interesting. Sky is targeting the evolution chamber. One of the best things about DTs is that they're actually they're actually quite fast. You can actually pull them away quite quickly. 
Scourge come in, scout everything. High Templar follow-up, really common when you go Dark Templar. You don't have the gateway count to have built a whole bunch of gateway units for defense, but you do have the fast um, Templar archives, so, so it's very easy to just get Storm. Whoa, he went 4DT. Damn. Damn, that is... That's, that's a little... I don't know, what's the opposite of greedy? What's the thing that face hunters do, man? This is, this is a little overly smorky, man. This is like a very smorky play. Like, oh, there's so many Dark Templar, I can't detect everything. Yeah. It's the thing that makes okay Zergs just lose so quickly. You know, just like, I'm gonna hide. The Dark Templar right here. But good Zergs will be like, oh look, free Dark Templar. Excellent, this is great news. All right, so if I'm if I'm Sky, I'm gonna I'm kind of being like, ah, oh, shit, you know, I sh okay, I shouldn't have done this, shouldn't have done that. Here is the uh, pretty typical timing for a third, but a lot of hydras, a lot of hydras, more hydras being built, a lot of hydras. However, I will note there's no sixth hatchery. Little things like that make a big difference the longer the game's going on. We have like one whole less hatchery doing stuff. High Templar are only okay when they're in big open spaces. This is why Zealots are much more so the unit of choice as time has gone on. That Zealot Lake Speed is so close to being finished. That Archon is probably going to get zero shots off its entire life. Oh, this is so skillful. This is not what I would have done. I would have just been like, well, I guess I lose an Archon. <laughs> just let it die. Alright, it's going to be mass zealot production right now for Sky, dude. Shield battery, a personal shield battery for the Archon. One of the benefits of going for not Reaver openings, as we saw Sky do, you have much more capability of just doing counter pressure, because you have things like zealot speed. You have stuff defending back home, like High Templar. I'm curious where that other DT went. It appears that it has died. Because these bases are mineral only, a lot of times people get mineral only bases just as a way to fund massive follow-up expanding. Taking expansions requires a lot of minerals, so I get my expansion focused expansion. <laughs> Will give me all the money I'll ever need to do expansions. Yes. You can quickly double it up. 11 Mutilus in production. Jadong has smartly noticed, hey, there ain't no air units right now. Gosh, Archons are so important to kill off. Sky is really good at microing them, too. Go home to your personal shield battery. Get out of here, man. Get out. Never mind. Never mind. He threw his life away. We'll always miss him. We'll never remember him. Oh, this is so sneaky. So I think Jadong perceived that there was a complete halt in Corsair production. Alright, I'm slowing this game back down again. This is intense. Oh. If I'm in Jadong's shoes, I'm actually very surprised to be seeing any Corsairs at this point. Oh, that was such an artful storm. It was so good, it didn't do anything successful at all. We have a stabilizing sky, but we also have this very intimidating Jadong that super fast hive tech. I, I really like this play. There's this thing that Jadong's doing where he's getting this third gas geyser a little early and the second gas geyser a little early, and it banks him up all this gas to where he can just abruptly get a bunch of lurkers or mutalisks and still get triple upgrades. This is brave. I think he's actually going to get two. <laughs> that was awesome. 
Did you see that move where Sky twisted back into the Mutalisks? Because Jadong was trying to do click follow micro. Wow, that was so cool. Alright, so Jadong is going to start doing some action with Lurker Defiler. Where's the Defiler, man? God, that was so sick. This is a nice defensible position, but it's kind of hard to get to from this angle. I would have assumed he had High Templar there already. Does he not? Uh-oh. Get... Well, one right click on that Nexus. Look at how fast Nexuses die. I'm not even on faster. Man, I've seen really good Protosses like Stork lose bases like this. And they just pull it together and they just, you know, go get themselves an advantage and then they can, like, win the game. I don't see a way for Sky to do that easily. Nice, it's gone forever. I guess the one big exception is the fact that Zerg doesn't have an extra gas geyser. Zerg is only just now getting one at this other expansion. But Jadong has a lot of macro hatches, man. Dude, macro, macro, macro. Mutalisks are here to both heal and deflect against drops. Oh, this was such a nice catch. Seeing all these overlords coming in and answering. This is very cute as well to have a place to retreat to. So that way, he can both deal with the drops with Corsairs and have his Corsairs protected. So Sky basically does not have enough gas to build almost any High Templar. He can, like, build Zealot Dragoon or pure Zealots with a few High Templar. He doesn't really have an in-between. Gosh, it's so fascinating to see on this map. An ultraless cavern. Why an ultraless cavern? Why that? Well, if your opponent is on a mineral only natural and is going to have an abundance of zealots, ultralisks are real good against zealots. Like, r insanely good. Because zealots hit twice with their attacks. Like, it says 16 plus 4, but what it's actually doing is 8 plus 2 twice. It's actually hitting for 10 damage twice. And since you can get, like, you know, five armor on an Ultralisk, uh, five additional armor on an Ultralisk, you wind up doing, like, minus six, minus six against those two. So it deals, like, almost, you basically have, like, 12 armor against Zealots. <laughs> All right. This is this is cool. Don't go in range. Don't go in range. Oh, he misses again. Don't go in range. Don't go in range. Is he gonna get that? Oh. So this is really cool by Sky. He he recovered. Retook this immediately. Retakes that and sets up a good defense up here, and is still making corsairs to defend against. Ugh. Still making corsairs to defend against. Some sort of weird drop. And over time, what's been emerging from Protosses is, is that they don't get that many High Templar. I still remember, you know, in the early days, players would get like seven, eight High Templar. And just try to storm everything, which creates a really big, emotionally spiky, fun moment, but... It's just not nearly as good. It's just having armies that can continue to deal damage. Like two Archons over their life, if you can protect them, they're going to deal way more than four Templar that each get off, you know, one or two storms. Instant answer. Oops, got some of my friends, no big deal. 
Nice play here by Sky, again, with this mineral-only expansion. We have all these extra minerals that will be coming in. So we're just going to go ahead and build extra expansions, no problem, too easy. But this is a pretty rough spot, and I think that Protoss is going to take the same approach that I was saying I'd want to do as Zerg. Lock this down, secure this one. So it looks like Ultralisks are getting researched. Ultralisks. Speed, Carapace, all the good stuff. Alright, chat, who's the money on? Who's your money on? This Protoss fared a lot better than Mr. Rain. But Jadong's back to this really comfortable lurker lane. Uh, defiler, obnoxious pushing stuffs. Ooh. Oh. Oh, if Sky can just pick off this Defiler. Gosh, Jadong's fast. And now there's no detection and no ability to play. So, I feel like here is where we're going to see why a lot of people just don't like getting Ultralisks over time. Like, they're super strong, especially with Dark Swarm. But that just doesn't feel as intimidating as, like, a Lurker, man. Especially with the, this number of Dark Templars getting produced. And this is the thing about late game. Look at this. DT, DT, DTs. Just huge numbers of DTs getting produced. It's like the ultimate anti-melee anti-Dark Swarm force. DT, Archon, with Reaver, ugh, yes. Reaver getting produced, High Templar getting produced. Man, Sky is so impressive. Hello. Hello. See you. I get real happy anytime I see any Overlord ever. Overlords are just wonderful, happy units. And he's gone. Alright, what's what's a sky to do? What's a sky to do? Well, basically, he has this really big opportunity to... What, what are you doing? He has this really big opportunity to build up a significant death force. He has... Four gases, five gases, one, two, three, four, five gases. Wow, yeah, with this one. And in this position, I, I feel like this is losing for Zerg pretty much always when there's an even money split on the map. This is part of the reason why Zergs generally do not like two-player maps. It just feels bad. Greater Spire coming up to be able to control and deal damage to this. Guy's trying to be a nice, controlly guy. Gosh, DTs are ridiculously good against Ultralisks. Yeah, see, because he has so many DTs and Archons, Sky can just fight this. Look at this! Look at how, like, there used to be Ultralisks here. <laughs> but this attack, I think, is actually going well. Well, no... Mr. Reaver. His probes are just like, oh, we're looking for work. We have nothing to do at home. Oh my gosh. Remember how I said that you could just go Reaver, High Templar, and you'd have an indestructible expansion, man? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Dude, there's just, there's just no, there's not even, there's not even storm. There's like maybe one storm every now and again, but it's like an almost exclusively DT Archon army. Oh my gosh, Archons. Oh, it's Devourers being produced. Okay, let's see how many Zerg units are needed to defeat this many DT's Archons. The Dragoons are just sort of like light supporters, man. They're not, they're not the most critical dudes. Holy shit. Oh, well, some of my favorite units popping up, man. Devours. Love Devours. 
all those acid spores. Jadong needs a few mutalists though to be able to deal enough damage. So Jadong does have this. That is that is really significant. So the funny thing is that with all this gas stockpiling, <laughs> this guy just built like a billion high templar on the backside. He's still making high templar. He's gonna have like an almost exclusively Archon army, but this is this is the dangerous spot in these super late game positions if you're Protoss. You have this big army that has a lot of momentum, and you lose all of it, and you have enough to rebuild it. I mean, look at Oz's bank. Or excuse me, uh, Sky's bank. But it doesn't matter because Zerg can rebuild so much more quickly that I think Sky, who's been doing like a dominant job all game long, might have screwed himself here. I can I just say I really hate that the UI in this game covers up replays. It like infuriates me. Especially when there's things like overlords over here that you just can't see, you have to like zoom in on. Alright. Let me turn my UI that covers up the screen back on. Alt U. Okay, so Sky now has a very, very, very scary, scary army. I mean, that is... That's nine Archons. <laughs> and with six DTs getting produced on the backside. So this, I mean, it sucks to lose the expansion, but it's not the biggest deal. Because it's a half-map split. You just lost minerals. You can afford to re-spend minerals to rebuild. You just need to make sure that you're getting the gas geysers. All right, who who we who we got who we got the bets on, man? What is the suppositions? What do we predict? I gotta say, I think I think if Jadon keeps making the, this sort of ultralisk focused army. I think Sky will win because it's just way too difficult to deal with this number of like DTs and Archons and Reavers like all in one force. If there winds up being a significant number of Guardians built though, ooh, Guardians, oh. Now, remember in the micro video, we talked about how dumb guardians were. Do you remember that? Remember that? Where where are the devourers, though? I think that this should go in favor of Protoss, I believe. I don't know how many DTs there are and Archons there are. Be a little messy though. Gosh. I'm so happy to see DTs being used in this way. They're so awesome. So Zerg has this. Zerg's broke. The entire left side of the map is out. Entire right side of the map. Well, Protoss still's got a little funds here. Protoss can just retake this. I I'm I'm shocked that Protoss has not yet retaken that. Shocked, I dare say. This is a surprisingly vulnerable position. I can't really explain why Protoss has not retaken that. So Zerg's kind of set up outside here. It looks like he's just going to be rallying up. God, Lithria has bet all his Earth coin on Zerg, man. We have a 170 food Protoss. I think now he's just going to be like, yeah, you know what? I really should retake that expansion. So many DTs. Ah, 
I do not know if Zerg can defend this at all. There's so many DTs here, man. The other thing in, in this position, if I had to say, what's the one thing that I would have done differently were I Jadon? I think it's just literally not make Ultralisks, man. Just go Hydra Defiler. Ooh, ooh, get out of here, headphone. Um, damn. This guy's really good. This guy's like very good. I'm very impressed with his play in that game. Well, hopefully we had some fun watching uh, uh, Jadong's private Zergvis Protoss practice games from 2010. And um, in the future going forward, I fully expect to do a whole bunch of just scouring through practice replays that top pros have released onto the internet because I think it's just really educational and frankly really fun. I just really like watching good games StarCraft, so um, I'm going to leave. Tomorrow we're doing Dota, and on Thursday we're doing... <sighs> My brain stopped. It's okay, it'll start up again soon. On Thursday we're going to be doing Zerg versus Zerg strategy, openings, tactics, all that good jazz crammed into one day of awesomeness. Of awesome! And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you had a great day.